You did big sexy thing with Lil Duval. That's new. That's how, the newest, newest. How was that? Well, I wanted to do a song that was fun and funny and kind of, you know, fun, funny for the family and maybe like could be a song that, you know, that got that wedding um, reception vibe, you know, just the vibe. Yeah. Old disco remake, disco record from back in the day. And a lot of artists, I had the song on file, shit, for way more than 10 years. I wouldn't say 15, but it was way more than 10 years. I had that song in my little repertoire of really? songs that could be made. It had the it was the instrumental was looped mm -hmm. and it had the hook on it mm -hmm. that was, I looped the hook from the actual song. And it was just something that I always had. And I played for people and they'd be like, nah, 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 nah. Damn. I been playing it for Snoop, all kind of motherfuckers. Like they just wasn't really feeling that moment in time. And then I um I had my boy Prozac, who does a lot of stuff for E40. He did he did some of the um he did some songs about Westmore, mm -hmm. you know, Prozac. He, he, he's a really good at remaking a song and bringing that exact element of the song, what it really is and always was. Mm -hmm. Instead of remaking it, it's a whole new, he, could, he keeps the essence of the song. And he can like, I don't know how he does it, but he can mimic like voices, hooks. He get the, all the sounds right, guitar, everything. So uh, he was the guy for the job. I was like, Prozac, man, do this one for me. And he came back with it and he had the hook, I believe in miracles. <laughs> and it was cool. But I was like, I need like somebody. Yeah. Like somebody, because it's a funny song and I need somebody funny to get on it. And right. you know, like, where you going to get Eddie Murphy? Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but right. where you going to get Eddie Murphy? Like, right. like who could fit the criteria? And hands down, it was like Duvall was a guy. But I didn't know. I knew he would do it and would sing on it, but I didn't know he could really sing. <laughs> Like, he really can sing. His song was Snoop's I, I told him to his face. I said, bro, you can really sing. He said, nah, bro, I'm just a comedian. I, you know, I could, I, he's like, what do you say? I would say impersonate. Oh, okay. But he sounded good to me on the song as a singer. Taking right. away the fact that it's Duval and he hella funny and all this shit. He, he sounded good on the song. Check I just, it out. Big Sexy. I just can't with the fact that he has a song say, that says black men don't cheat. Like, what is that? Black man what? He has a song Black man says, don't cheat? Yeah. That's the name of the song or that's in the song? That's the name of the song. I'm pretty sure. Sounds like sarcasm to me. Right? What is your take on cheating too short? <laughs> uh, it's only cheating if you don't tell the truth. Mm. You know? Yeah, he has a song called Black Men Don't Cheat. So when I was young and I was, a, you know, the pullout king, I had a, a couple of safety nets. My main safety net was on the day that I meet you and the first time we ever talk, most people that meet and they like got a little flirt thing going, they like, you single, who you with, you know? <laughs> and they be like, are you single? And I'm like, not really. I do have somebody I'm involved with, but they don't live in this city. They live out of town. Mm -hmm. And that was just a safety net. It wasn't a true story. I would just say that to every woman I meet and flirt with just as a safety net of, what if you got deeply involved with her and then she saw you with somebody else or she found out something about somebody else? You could always go back to the safety net and say, damn, when I first met you, I told you I was involved with somebody that lived out of town. Right. That was just a... So when you see me with the other person, she might be local. She might be my girlfriend before you. But that was my safety net. I, I planted that seed early in the conversation in the friendship just so that I always have an exit door of co confrontation. I'm I'm very non-confrontational mm -hmm. and I'm just like, if you yell at me and go, how you cheat? You I just go, I'm gonna call you. Let's talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> and I just like retreat <laughs> instead of going, yeah, motherfucker, well, well, I just, it's, I'm just always been like, it is what it is. Cause I'm kind of, I'm kind of scary in relationships. I'm not really, um, you're scary. You know, I'm not really like going to go down that journey with you of let's fucking deal with everything. And I'm really, I'm, 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 I'm telling you all this stuff as a young short dog. For sure. This is, I didn't mature until I was 40 years old. I was a little ass boy until I was 40. I was handling my business, but I was mature as fuck when it came to relationships. And I was immature as fuck when it came to relationships and, and just dealing with them. I just, I just was a kid. I'm like, on to the next. Or I, you hella serious coming at me with tears and I'm fucking laughing, talking about, man, you tripping, man. <laughs> Why you tripping? I wasn't with her last night, man. Like that, I was that guy. 